Alright people, what's happening? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video. And today's video is a match preview of Chelsea versus Southampton in the Premier League away on the coast. Really important game for Chelsea. They need to start getting more W's on the board if truly they have top four aspirations in the Premier League this season. But they are in good form. Three wins on the bounce in different competitions. So they need to bring back another win in the Premier League against Ruff Hasenhutl side, which is doable. So a really interesting match preview we're going to get into today but before we crack into the nuts and bolts of this video I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel I upload every single day and I don't want anyone to miss out so please do subscribe hit that bell notification button and why not like the video to help out your homeboy right so Chelsea are just coming off a superb win away against Lille it was hard fought it was probably imperfect but it was important and they got like I said the three points on the board in the Champions League really important they did it away. Tammy Abraham got a Champions League goal. Willian uh, proving people wrong scoring again. I mean, he hasn't been amazing, but he's looking to be an important player for Frank Lampard. Generally a feel-good factor. Frank Lampard's had his uh, pre-match press conference. He said N'Golo Kante should be fit should be fit for the game, which is a positive. Another huge positive is he has confirmed Jorginho as vice-captain of Chelsea, which is huge. Something that I and loads of other people have been calling out for. I personally think he's proper captain material. The way he integrates himself into all sort of like little groups of the squad. He's friendly with everyone, yet he's commanding. Uh, he's quite a compassionate dude. He's basically perfect, really. His English is getting better and better. And for me, as much as I love Azpilicueta and he is proper Chels in terms of dedication, professionalism and hard working, he's kind of missing a few things that would make him a great captain. And you know what? For me, Jorginho has got it all. And that's saying something. He's only been with Chelsea for a season. He was a boo boy for the vast majority of the first season. But because he has these attributes so transparently, everyone's noticed, not least Frank Lampard, who very comfortably made him vice captain. So yeah, Chelsea away at Southampton in the Premier League. So the Saints, the Saints, they've uh, enjoyed a sort of mixed spell in the opening stages of the Premier League. Um, obviously, they had a great win against Pompey in that derby in the cup, which is huge for them. Uh, Danny Ings is being selected again and scoring, which will be a threat for Chelsea. But I don't know, like, obviously, they, they lost to Tottenham against the 10 man Tottenham. They conceded a, a winning margin. And to be honest, I think that was, that was a good performance from Tottenham in the second half to come back and win. It showed a bit of spirit. Uh, the, the little bit of spirit that seems to be left in Tottenham. But the Saints are a good side, especially under Ralph Hasenhul. I said this last season, man. He's an excellent manager. He looks like he's offering something different. And I don't think he's going to be really easy to pin down in terms of exactly what he's going to do, like what system he's going to employ. He's direct, he is dangerous, and there are things to look out for. So on that note, why don't we open the analysis screen? Right, so on the graphic beside me is the lineup that Ralph sent out last time out against Tottenham, a 3 5 2 formation. The front three of Redmond, uh, Danny Ings, and Sofiane Buffel in behind is actually really, really deadly. On Sofiane Buffel, people think he's been underwhelming since he's come to the Premier League and generally he has in terms of what he's delivered or maybe how much he's played but he is such a talented footballer when he came from France to England I was like this dude's the nuts when I saw him play very very dangerous and on his day he'll score an absolute worldy individual goal so Chelsea need to look out for him they need to look out for um, Redmond obviously as well because he's very talented he's a known quantity in the Premier League but also the man in form Danny Ings that can score sort of old school goals the goals that Chelsea are vulnerable to recently in terms of like you know transitional goals or set piece goals which obviously is Chelsea's biggest Achilles heel. Danny Ings could be the man to score those goals. Obviously two ex-Chelsea boys in there and Romeo and Bertrand and you know what as soon as there's an ex-player in that squad you're going to be terrified because it's the ex-player curse. They always either have a worldly performance against you or score a decisive goal or something. Obviously both very good players in their own right so Chelsea need to look out for them. James Ward-Prowse a set-piece master, a dead ball master. Again he could be the man behind a uh, set-piece or a free kick that could unravel Chelsea because again that's Chelsea's Achilles heel at the moment um he'd be the man behind free kicks whether it's direct on goal or serving it up to some big men in the box he's a very useful weapon for Hasenhut and it's just 
terrifying, basically. And to be fair, generally their back three is very, very good as well. Someone like Vestergaard's actually been really impressive this season. So they've got quality, actually, from top to bottom in their starting 11. I wanted to actually pull up the statistics from the last game out against Tottenham as well because they were so dominating from uh, Southampton. But because Spurs got a red card so early, I thought it would be a poor reflection. But they had dominating stats. And again, this season in the Premier League, they've been up and down, but they have very much got the potential to be very, very good. At the end of last season, as soon as they secured um, safety in the league, Hassan, who like, you know, mixed up a little bit and they didn't win a couple of times or something like that. But with when he was using his intelligence and his application as a coach, they were very dangerous. And I was like, well, next season, they could be really, really good. So when he gets it right, they can be basically a massive threat. And remember, they're at home and they'll be trying to pick up off good phases of play against Tottenham and that win against Pompey. So, you know, Chelsea got to watch out here. But how are Chelsea going to line up against the Saints? Let's switch the graphic over to a couple of potential Chelsea lineups. Right, as you can see on the graphic next to me, I've gone for two different formations. Shock horror, one's a three-back system, one's a four-back system. I thought after the Champions League, how if Lampard switched to a back four system midway through and Chelsea looked a lot better, I felt like, right, back to the Premier League, he won't play a back three system again. It would just be Chelsea's 4-2-3-1 or 4 Free, free, and they can express themselves a bit more and everything will be fine and then I looked Southampton wait a minute I double checked looked at the lineup I was like oh yeah a free back system this is just basically crying out for Lampard to do his 3-4-3 free, free again isn't it Lampard likes the 3-4-3 free, free when he wants to be defensively solid more so when he's away from home more so 100% against an opposition who themselves deploy a free back system so this is a perfect concoction for Lampard to basically use a 3-4-3 free, free. rather frustratingly in my opinion, but he might do a 4-2-3-1. Regardless, it's a personnel thing because we know Frank Lampard's got the adaptability and pragmatism to switch halfway through. He can make one sub and change the whole formation, which is actually a great thing for your coach to have in his locker, or certainly your team to have. So personnel-wise, I'm not sure Rudiger will be back in yet, maybe not Emerson. So you imagine Alonso, apparently N'Golo Kante's back, which would be huge, or rather he's fit to go again. And really, it's probably going to be more of the same in expecting Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham to play the way he talked about them in their England call-ups. Shout out to Fikayo Tamore, Mason Mount, Ross Barkley and Tammy Abraham for all getting England call-ups. But he did comment on, well, I need them to be, you know, focused for Sunday this weekend. So I imagine both Mason and Tammy starts. Whether Mason Mount plays in midfield or the left wing is an interesting talking point. Personally, I think this game's crying out for a start for Callum hudson Doy, Obviously, he started in the Grimsby match, played very, very well. He came on as a sub in Brighton and featured a bit more. Basically, he's been featuring sporadically, but I feel like he's probably ready for another start. Um, so for me, I'm thinking maybe left wing, Willian on the right wing, because Frank really is happy with Willian's performance at the moment. So again, it poses the Christian Pulisic question, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. If you want to to hear my thoughts and opinions on that go check out my last video I did yesterday on the Christian Pulisic situation great player will feature at Chelsea just isn't at the moment who knows he might start this game or come off the bench and feature but vice captain Jorginho and Golo Kante should be starting in the midfield I think whether it's a midfield two and a three four three or a midfield three an interesting question to pose here is who's going to play at right back maybe if it's a conventional four back system it might be Azpilicueta for defensive solidity but maybe it could be Reese James in the back four system. I think stylistically Frank probably prefers him over Azpilicueta but if he does play the 3-4-3 three, three again he might play them together again. Uh, as P right centre back, Reese James right wing back, who knows. Interesting questions to pose but I think regardless of the system formation personnel it might shift mid game and Frank will be looking to catch old Ralphie out here. Right that's enough of speculated formations and lineups let's get rid of the analysis screen. So, obviously a huge game, and this is the kind of fixture that could catch Chelsea out, well, to be honest, most fixtures are the kind of fixture that could catch Chelsea out at the moment, but that's okay. Growing pains, teething issues, as long as the ethos and philosophy and direction is right, which it all is, everything's 
cool essentially but the Saints will fancy a win here they know Chelsea aren't perfect and they know they're at home and they know they've got positives to build on and they're probably due a decent result so they'll absolutely fancy something here and believe they can take a draw at least that's how I think they'll go into this they have a lot of pace running in behind Sofia and Buffel and Redmond and stuff like that Bertrand certainly on the flank as well they've got a proper number nine in Danny Ings that will be looking to do damage and they've got strength in the midfield and they got good defense really I think this is going to be a chess game, a battle of systems between the two coaches. Who's going to exploit a weakness first? I think Frank probably will go for the back three system and he will look to exploit a weakness in the Saints side, but probably change it as soon as he sees it not working, hopefully. I see this as a high scoring game. I want to be positive as a Chelsea fan and I'm going to predict a Chelsea win, but I'm going to predict a 3-2 heart attack, walk away with the points on the board <laughs> and just be happy with that. But I do see... Chelsea conceding a goal, maybe two, but I think, you know, spirits are high in the Chelsea camp and I feel like they'll do what's necessary, hopefully, to get the win. So I'm going to stick with my prediction with a free two. But what do you lot think? I want to hear it. Get down in the comments below. How do you think this game is going to go? What do you think the score is going to be? Put your score predictions down in the comments and let me know what you think of the channel and the content at the moment. And if you want to help me out, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And if you want, if you won, you can join the Football Therapy Discord, which is a big chat server essentially that myself, in and a load of other people. Uh, it's, the link's down in the description. It's through Patreon. It costs $1. And why not follow me on social media? at Football Yannick, Twitter and Instagram, at Football Yannick. Uh, that's it from me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I laugh me, bitch.